Okay, good evening, everybody. Thanks for um, joining us this evening. Um, this is going to be a session devoted to studying veterinary medicine in Zagreb in Croatia. Uh, we're joined by Yuri Grizelt, who's the uh, Vice Dean of International, or Vice Dean of the English fact or the English Department, something of that nature, and Charlotte Stiles, who is a student we helped a few years ago to go and study in Zagreb. And um, I guess she's liking it, otherwise she probably wouldn't have been invited to come and share her thoughts with you today. But obviously she is here to, you know, do, um, to answer any questions that you might have. Now, just before we get started, I just want to say that, you know, at the end, because you're not going to be a huge number, I'll probably just unmute anybody so we can all, you know, shout in with any questions that we've got. But if anything comes up, while we are talking and you would like to ask a question for us to start our discussion with um, after you've heard a bit more from Yuri and myself, uh, do use the Q&A function that you can find in Zoom and you know anything that comes in there we'll just go from the top and answer all your questions. All right well without further ado what I will do is I have just prepared a very very brief um, presentation to start us off with and I will just Go through that for a moment or two. Um, hang on, am I screen, sharing, sharing the wrong screen right now? So you're seeing, hopefully you're seeing this. Okay, yeah. I've got my emails now. All right, um, so studying veterinary medicine in Europe. Um, well, basically, we what what is our role in this? Essentially, we help students predominantly from the UK and Ireland uh, to go and study in English in all sorts of places around the world in all sorts of different subjects. So when you're starting to try and see what your options are, and I guess some of you on the call today, you will probably have found us primarily through our A Star Future website, where we list all the degrees that we are aware of taught in English at European and an increasing number of Asian universities. But we're here basically just to try and help British students be a little bit more adventurous and explore new destinations, but also to help out when you know things don't entirely go to plan here in the UK, which is, to be honest, predominantly what happens more in the health sciences. Now, if you go on our website, you will see that there is a very limited range of options for veterinary medicine, not a huge number. Um, they are all in Central and Eastern Europe, I would say, um, four in Poland, two in Bulgaria, but one each in most other countries. And of course, today, we're going to dedicate ourselves to only one of those, and that is Croatia. So you're going to learn all about the University of Zagreb, Zagreb's Faculty of Medical uh, or Fac Faculty of Veterinary Medicine in this program. One thing I will just say before we get started, that most of the degrees in Europe are either five and a half or six years instead of the standard five years here in the UK. Now, before I do hand over to Yuri, I do just want to address a couple of practical issues which come up time and again, no matter where you want to study. Um, once you've worked out which universities might be the right places for you, obviously the first thing to bear in mind is entry requirements. Are you going to meet them? And yet, they are generally easier than you'll find in the UK and Ireland. There's no denying that. Um, so, you know, you could get in with A-levels that just wouldn't get you a look in here in the United Kingdom, for example, or with a Leaving Cert score that's nowhere near what you would be expected to get to, to study in Ireland. That does not mean, however, that it is easy to get in or easy to maintain your place once you get there. This is certainly not the case that these universities that are teaching elsewhere in Europe are doing so at a lower standard than here in the UK. In fact, you might find that it's a little bit surprising sometimes in terms of what's expected of students. I know, and presumably Yuri and perhaps Charlotte will elaborate on this a little bit further on, for example, that students in the first year have often struggled with the fact that they have to do things like physics, which is not a typical component, say, of a veterinary degree here in this country. But usually, you know, if you've got any questions relating to your academic track record, and if you see any kind of shortcomings there, we can usually, within reason, help you with those. But what we can't do is make it any easier for you to become a vet. That's completely out of our hands. How do you apply? You're probably already aware that UKS and the CAO have got nothing to do with applying to universities abroad. Um, today, you're going to hear only about Zagreb. Um, and if you are in the UK and Ireland, then you apply through us and in conjunction with Yuri, uh, and we'll be able to help you at various times throughout the next 12 months or indeed the following year, if that's when you actually end up going to, uh, to study abroad. Um, deadlines are later than they are in the UK, but 
not that much later if you want to apply early. Um, we we are just about to see the first window open for Zagreb for 2021. So this is actually a really good moment. If you have decided that this is the way you want to go, you could literally request an application form from me and get cracking with it uh, tomorrow. These are our various websites. That's our email, my email address and Twitter. You're welcome to contact us through any of those at any time you want. Um, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand over now to um, Yuri because he's the one, well, he's got more to tell you about Zagreb than I ever could. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for giving me um, to lead uh, the, the further um, minutes of this uh, short presentation. Well, I will also, I would also like to start uh, sharing my screen and uh, start this uh, presentation with um, with a PowerPoint presentation. Let's start with this. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. So I would like to uh, say hello, first of all, to our uh, future candidates or in future students, hopefully, and all other webinar participants. Good evening. And uh, I am really happy to have this opportunity to greet you most cordially and respectfully on behalf of the management of the, our faculty of veterinary medicine and its uh, Dean, Professor Turk. So uh, since we cannot have this, uh, the, the possibility of direct contact at any of the academic fairs, with uh, Mr. Mark Huntington from the agency. We have arranged this, this webinar, which I believe will meet your expectations. So um, let's start with, a, with, a, with some brief review of, uh, our, about our university and uh, our school. The University of Zagreb is the oldest, largest, and in an academic and research sense, the leading university in the Republic of Croatia, founded in 1669. And the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine was founded in 1919. So last year we celebrated the 100th anniversary. And our faculty is the oldest and leading institution of higher veterinary education in the region. As you, as you have seen in these in those, in this, uh, pictures and slides, Zagreb is the capital of Croatia, a typical Central European city, offering a wide range of cultural, sporting, entertainment, and other activities. It, it, it is uh, it's inter interesting that the city also has a ski resort, which can be reached by the city tram, uh, city's uh, tram network. And at the same time, it is only 150 kilometers from the nearest beach on the, uh, on the Adriatic Sea. Despite being a city of a million inhabitants, it is a very safe city as shown by the very low crime figures. The faculty offers three levels of higher education, the most important for you is uh, an integrated undergraduate and graduate university course in veterinary medicine, and also university specialist courses in veterinary medicine in 16 different subject areas, and also PhD studies in veterinary science, uh, which, was, uh, which were awarded the designation of high quality in 2017. In the 2020 and 2021 academic year, 880 students are studying at the veterinary faculty on the integrated course and 51 students on postgraduate course. Since the 2016-2017 academic year, we have been offering the integrated course in veterinary medicine in English, and we currently have 92 students over five years from 29 different countries and five continents. The enrollment quota is 35 students and enrollment documents are submitted by email. There are four enrollment periods in December, in April, July, and August. The academic year begins on 1st October and the annual tuition fee is 9,000 euros. The faculty cannot provide accommodation, but offers assistance in contracting, in contracting uh, certified a, uh, agencies also, there is a refectory providing breakfast and lunch at affordable prices on the faculty campus. The integrated course in veterinary medicine in English lasts six years and students in the 10th semester can choose one of three specialized orientations, household pets, then farm animals and horses, 
And the third one, the hygiene and technology of food of animal origin and veterinary public health. The curriculum, of, the curriculum of the course is aligned with EU directives and the teaching methods are aligned with the requirements of the European higher education area. Since 2003, the faculty has been regularly evaluated and is on the EVE list of positively evaluated faculties of uh, Europe. Upon completion of the course, the student is awarded 360 uh, credits or ECTS point and the title of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. A diploma from the veterinary faculty of the University of Zagreb is recognized throughout the European Union and our graduates works, uh, work in many countries in the EU and further afield. There is a student mentoring system in the first year, which makes it easier for students to find their way on the course and in the world of veterinary medicine. Every student is given a mentor who helps them uh, get acquainted with the course and supports them in mastering the, the content. In addition, there is a student office at the faculty where students can ask for help related to uh, all aspects of student life. All lectures, practicals and seminars are held in one place within the veterinary faculty campus, which is not far from the city center and is well connected by transport routes with all parts of the city. A large part of the course consists of practical classes, laboratory exercises, visiting industrial meat and dairy processing plants, and learning about their products, visiting and becoming acquainted with farms and observing the work of the contemporary well-equipped clinics at the faculty. An impressive number of 25,000 patients are dealt with each year at our, at our clinics, including exotic animals and decorative birds, which makes it possible for students to work in small groups. This offers the widest possible range of practical research using real examples, and students are given the opportunity to attend the treatment of patients related to the most diverse fields of veterinary medicine, such as abdominal surgery, orthopedics, ophthalmology, dentistry, soft tissue surgery, cardiology, gastroenterology, obstetrics, reproduction, autopsies, radiology with modern CT scan, ultrasound and X-ray devices, and physical therapy, acupuncture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The faculty has project activities lasting several, several years related to elective subjects in which students are actively involved, such as those relating to sea mammals, bears, wolves, and lynx. The faculty also has its own educational hunting ground where students are able to learn about the management of wild game animals in practical way. The faculty also traditionally organizes the summer school, Zoonosis, which is held in the spring in Dubrovnik, the Pearl of the Adriatic Sea, and aquaculture, which is held at several sea and freshwater fish farms. Since 1938, students of veterinary medicine have run their own scientific professional journal, Veterinar, in which they publish both scientific and professional articles, but also a variety of popular articles related to student mobility. Student mobility takes place uh, within various uh, networks, the most popular of which are Erasmus+, Cepus, and IUF. A large number of students, about 50% in total, undertake several months of professional practice experience uh, through these programs. Moreover, within Erasmus Mobility, students from other countries undertake their professional practical experience at our, at our school. And there is a great deal of interest in this and a long waiting list. Precisely for this reason, the faculty has 50 agreements with various uh, veterinary faculties around Europe and the world, and students are able to spend part of their study program at one of the faculties with which we have an agreement. Student surveys show that students at the veterinary faculty in Zagreb are ext extremely satisfied with the, their rel relationship with the teaching staff and particularly mention the student friendly approach, which is, I believe, a specific characteristic of the veterinary mindset. Students are very actively involved in the scientific research and professional work of the faculty. Student associations are also active at the faculty, such as USVM, the Association of Students of Veterinary Medicine and the Vet Society, which is an association for students of veterinary medicine in English. Students are also involved in extracurricular activities at the faculty and, for example, are able to join the academic choir 
which has performed many times in Croatia and Europe. They also regularly take part in scientific and cultural events, such as the Festival of Science and the Museum Nights, etc. The faculty also has uh, several sporting groups whose members take part in competitions on a university, inter-university, national and international level. So in conclusion, I believe that enrolling in our college is in a way a matter of trust. So you can have a complete confidence in entrusting your student to the veterinary faculty of the University of Zagreb. And now I will uh, run a short uh, video about, about our school. So just a minute. Yeah. Okay, while Yuri's doing that, I just want to mention to our participants on the call, some of you have obviously joined since I said mm -hmm. this at the very beginning, please do, this video will last about five minutes, I think, please do use that time to put any cute questions you've got into the yeah. Q&A, because immediately after that, we will start, uh, you know, answering what it is you want to know about Zagreb. Okay, oh, back to you, Yuri. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. You need to share the screen, Yuri. It's not it's not coming up. Mm -hmm. oh. Right now we're just watching you watch a video. Oh, okay.
Thank you very much, Yuri, for sharing that video with us. I think we can all agree that there was a, a lot of visual input as to what the universe <laughs> looks like. So hopefully that satisfied your curiosity. And hopefully our audience is the kind of doesn't mind seeing things around people's necks and recoil at that as much as perhaps a, a regular member of the population might do. Anyway, what I'd like to do now is move on to, you know, just getting a little bit more of a student perspective on life there. I have seen that a couple of questions have come in already, and Bertie and Ruby, I'm definitely going to answer your questions, or we we'll definitely get answers to your questions. Um, but before we get stuck into those, I thought what I'd like to do is just introduce Charlotte as a, as you heard at the beginning, a fourth year student from the UK. Uh, and, you know, just before we get started, um, I'd like Charlotte to, to introduce herself a little, perhaps focusing on how it is she has ended up in Zagreb in the first place, because she must have made a decision that some of you will be wrestling with right now and not seen her end up over there. So maybe if you'd like to say something about that, Charlotte, that would be a, a helpful introduction. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, it's, we're fine. Okay, nice. Um, so how I ended up in Zagreb, um, I actually had a place to study veterinary in England which was very nice. Uh, and then I took a year out and I went traveling. Uh, and that's when I decided to come to Zagreb actually. Um, and that's also when I found the uh, agency, my best friend at home, she was looking to study medicine abroad. And then I was like, just also interested. And then I came across this, which is how I ended up here. So I wanted to study outside of England and Croatia looked really cool. I actually didn't know where it was. I didn't even know where Zagreb was. And I just thought, oh, I'll go. And I'd never been to Croatia. And Mark was very helpful. And I, I thought oh, I have nothing to lose. Um, so that's how I ended up here, which is quite, quite um, a random thing. But and I also have friends who are studying uh, veterinary and human medicine at home, although most of them are um, a year ahead of me since I took one one year break. Um, but I would absolutely say that I'm very happy here. Um, I wouldn't be also speaking now if, if I didn't. And I would really strongly recommend that anyone um, at least gives it a try if, if you have these opportunities. Um, because I also think that not enough uh, students from the UK are going abroad. We're accepting so many students from abroad, but I think not enough are leaving also. And I think there's so many um, benefits to it. So I'm happy to like share why I think it's great. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. 
Thanks, Charlotte. Um, perhaps now, if, you could, if I could just ask you to go a little bit further into the future, because obviously, well, not it's in the past for you, but in the, the decision-making process, when you first arrived in Zagreb, particularly from an academic point of view, um, you must have had, I suppose, some kind of idea as to what university in the UK would have been would have been like just because you've been to school here and all the rest of it. So you'd have had all the preparation and all the talks about what university life is like. Did you find that that's how it was in Zagreb or how comfortable was it for you settling in at least with that first initial transition, shall we say? Um, like I actually, uh, I didn't really find a problem here. Um, I, uh, in my first year, I arranged to live with two people on my course just because I felt like that would be like the more comforting thing if you're sort of with other people in the same position as you, um, which I also like would, I'm not living with those people now, but I would also recommend it like, you know, stick together and like, especially when you know if you're living somewhere. Uh, and my parents also said that they had to come for my first week to see like where I am and like where I'm living and stuff. Um, I didn't find really any, any problems with, with being here. Um, and especially uh, being the second generation, I noticed that a lot of the professors, um, they're like, oh, are you guys okay? You know, like you're far from home. If you need a help with anything, if you need like dentist or if you need uh, to go to the doctors or, or you don't know this general stuff, then we will like, they would help you, with, you know, with that or recommend stuff. Um, Cause obviously you are far from home and coming at 18 or 19 could be, could be a bit scary, but I would say um, in terms of the university side, you would not struggle to find someone to help you, especially as an international student. So many of the professors are like, of course there are professors who are less uh, helpful in this way, but there are some which are really, really nice and they want to help you with anything. Um, also in terms of the city, I really, really love the city here. I didn't find, um, I didn't actually, I made like a nice group of friends here very easily outside of the faculty. Um, and I didn't have any problems with like worrying, am I safe or where am I? Or like, oh, I'm really far from home or I can't find like my favorite food in the supermarket or like any of these things when you move away, you might be like scared. Um, and I would also say there's a nice community at the uni, especially with the international section that you have, um, lots of opportunities to see the older students and if they need if they need like if you need something then they would help you and okay there was only one generation above us but we were all good friends and we were all like talking with each other and saying like oh I don't know where is this department or like well how do I do this and and especially now since there's so many generations and I know from for myself when I see like lower generations maybe I don't know them or I hear some someone speaking English, then I automatically like think like, oh, are they okay? Or like they need something. And then I would, you know, if you see someone looking lost and you can hear English, then there aren't that many of us. So you can sort of work it out. So I really wouldn't say that people would need to be scared like being being away. And like for me personally, I, um, okay, it, it's, it, you know, you're taking a plane to get here, but some people are going to universities also like six hour drives from their home or train. So like, I don't know, it's not so much of a problem. And I would always say that like, you know, we're still on earth. So even if you're in a different country, it does not like mean that you're not gonna be able to find what you need and there will always be someone here to help you. So I wouldn't. Okay, well, it's good that you said that, Charlotte, because one of the things I wanted to ask about is because, you know, veterinary students are, you know, uh, you know, the, the, and the faculty is its own little world, but you found it relatively easy to step outside of that world and find your place in, in Zagreb as well to me, because there, there can't be that many other international students around, or is that a uh, Absolutely, I would say you have to step outside of the faculty because you live here all the time and you have to find, uh, like for me personally anyway, I had to find friends which were out of the faculty, out of any, any um, you know, to have a break because you're sp we're spending such a long time in the uni that you really have to go and explore the city also and meet people and have like something outside of your uni, else it will just that will be the only thing you're here for and then you won't enjoy it. Um, so yeah, I was very lucky enough to 
become involved with the international um, program in the human medicine faculty here in Zagreb, which is very popular. There are lots, it's a bit more developed. It's been going on a bit longer. And so I have also my roommates are from human medicine in the international section there and most of my friends. So I would say, yeah, you have to like, you know, try and like get out of the faculty and you know meet some other people as well and make make a home here and not just think that you're really far and that's that and everyone's in England or wherever they are um, um, and there are, I think there's also international section for dentistry there maybe. are a few dentistry yeah. students and, and dentistry Erasmus is so too. popular here there's there's always like um, international students here and you can just you can hear English so often in coffee shops or in the library or whatever it's not like it, it's not like an unusual thing to be international student here. No I mean one of the things that always concerns me when I start working with a new city or a new country is not just you know is the course up to scratch and obviously you heard a little bit from Yuri and you know, about the EAV, EVA accreditation and all the rest of it you know this is a program at the highest level in Europe but my co major concern is you know these are young people going to a strange country for the first time um, first time away from home um, and I'm always worried you know how are they going to actually get on with their life in this place that I personally know nothing about at all. And it does seem to me that one of the, the, the nicest things about Zagreb is that students do seem to really enjoy their time there. I've never had anybody who's gone there who said, oh no, this is a, a boring city or too small or too foreign or too weird. It just, it doesn't come up. Everybody seems to be happy, you know, contradictory, yeah. Yeah, but that seems I to be agree. the way it is. I would agree. I, like I'm, I'm studying really hard, but I'm also knowing that you have to do other stuff. And I found there's so many events going on. There's so many cool places to drink coffee or beer and like obviously not in corona but there's also like lots of stuff going on you can as also Yora was saying in terms of location okay you, you know you have the uni side but outside of uni in terms of location traveling to all these other places and all these other cities and the nice op opportunities in Croatia which I definitely have made like the most of I would say like pe people don't really know what they're missing and it's it's really nice here so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say from that side there could be problems and also the safety aspect as well I would have to say because my parents when I wanted to come here at like 18 and they didn't even know where is Zagreb um, but actually ever since I moved here I really noticed how how safe it is which also makes me feel a lot nicer um, and I don't have any issues walking home in the dark from places or having my earphones in or like whatever time it may be and like dodgy areas of the city are not something that I'm worried about or anything so in you know in that sense there are no problems. So do you actually live near the campus then or have you moved more into a, a different neighborhood because I know where the, the veterinary campus is it's, it's reasonably central but not absolutely central in Zagreb isn't it? Um, Zagreb is really not that big so to be honest like you can always it's not a problem where where you live like I think when I first lived here I lived like in a nice area, but I mean, it's just, it's not a big city at all. I, I like to live within walking distance because I like always walk, coming to the faculty by foot. But if you want to come on the tram or the bus, it's also it's also very well connected. I, I've moved uh, three times since, since I was here. And um, yeah, I would say, I think like, it's really not a big city. So you, you can easily Get, if you like forget something or have to go in and get some lunch or whatever it's not right. not a, it's not in the center but it's not far from the center you won't have it okay well just to return to the issue of sort of academic difference and i appreciate charlotte it's a little bit difficult putting you on the spot here because you've not actually studied veterinary medicine in the uk but you said at the beginning it was something that you were thinking about and it was an option for you how, how would you describe your experience academically in terms of the workload were there was it a lot more than perhaps you your fellow compatriots in the UK might have been encountering in the first year were there any elements of the curriculum that you thought were unexpected or anything like that um okay uh I would say you have to be uh prepared for maybe a different way of doing things here um so we have very long hours of uni and very long hours of classes uh, and you have to attend really your lectures. You, I think you can miss maybe 30%, but you have to go. And it means 
you know, very often you'll have to be at the uni for nine hours in the day and it's, it's very tiring. But, you know, like it is what it is and you, you like there is no negative part of, of that. OK, the, the days are very long, um, but I know from my friends at home, their lectures are, you know, not compulsory and they're not always going to them. And, you know, it depends how, how you like studying. Some people have to go to a lecture to make them to study and some people don't. And it is what you make of it. But actually, for me, I never really saw it as a, as a problem. And having a routine is is nice. And, you know, if you're spending all this time with your crafts, then I don't know you're getting your money's worth, maybe less than people might be at home. Um, so, yeah, I would say, you know, in terms of like the time that you're spending at the uni compared to how I know that uh, my friends at home, uh, it's, it is like long but also at the same time at home if you weren't at the uni listening to your lectures you would probably have to be in the library studying anyway so you know like if you're doing this degree you know what you're getting yourself in for so whether you're like tired because you're at the uni all day or you're tired because you're at the library all day then it, for me it doesn't make any yeah. well, um, I think Yuri likes it where we get students who know what they are letting themselves in for but I wouldn't yeah. always assume that's the case that's a, I mean, it, it, when you're studying medicine it's not going to be easy wherever you are and I think very it true is you make of it and if you know if you're not studying and you're not making the most of your opportunities because because you don't want to be here all the time then you shouldn't be here so I no I don't yeah it's a different way of doing it um but yeah I know for the lectures I'm not sure I cannot really compare with the practicals um because I'm not sure how the practicals are in England but uh, yeah. But but looking slightly further, well, looking slightly forward now, you're obviously in your fourth year, which still means you've got, well, you're just over halfway, really, aren't you? You've sort of just reached the halfway point. Um, did you come into this with any kind of career goal in mind? I mean, uh, where you wanted to end up? Has that in any way shifted while you've been there? Or is it still a bit early to talk about that? Or do you know where you want to end up, basically? Uh, who's I, helping you with that? I always think whenever I, uh, the, the pre-clinical years and the clinical years, which I'm now starting in the, four, in the fourth year, um, since I started everything in clinics, I think every time I start a new subject that I want to do that now. So I, I cannot really say uh, where I will be, but what I will say is that there's so many opportunities here which can help you to decide that could be overlooked if you are um, not having such a nice experience as, as we are um, you know, being in such a small number. For example, ever since I moved here, I always made sure to get involved with student projects, student organizations, student works. Um, and I don't know if this is so um, accessible to students at home, just in terms of sheer numbers. When you have 200 or 250 students in a year, the professor is not going to know your name and they're not go you know, there's gonna be more competition for like this sort of things, which I just mentioned. So yeah, I would say that this is like, huge benefit of being here and also can help you realize more possibilities or opportunities that you may not have done at home. Um, like for example, when I was in my second year, I did a project with the um, uh, dolphins and marine, marine mammals with my anatomy professor. I recently have also been doing trips with some of my professors from the hunting department, which uh, Yuri was mentioning. Um, I had a student job here as well, like all of these extra things when you have such a smaller number of students, I feel like they're more accessible. And if you're trying more of these things outside of very stereotypical picture that people think of vets just working in a, in a clinic and you're able to go to the field or do necropsies of different animals that you would never have, then it enables you to have more ideas to think about where you will go. And so I would definitely say that since I moved here and I was lucky enough to have these opportunities, then I thought, you know, like, oh, wow, I didn't know that was a possibility as, as a vet student or as a vet to do that. So I would definitely say it, it can help you think of a wider picture. And also in terms of like location, you know, where, where we are, that we have like different animal species as well, which is nice. 
Uh, good. Okay. Well, well, thank you very much, Charlotte. You've given us quite a good picture of what life is like and what the, the university is like. What I'd like to do now is just give you a slight little breather because there are a couple of questions in here, which are perhaps more for your eye and myself. Um, but please, anybody else who's on this call, this is your opportunity to ask somebody who is going through this right now. Um, do pipe up while we're answering the specific questions here. And the first one I want to address, I, I believe, Yuri, you can see the questions as well, yeah? No. No? no. Mm. If you open the Q&A, you should be able to. And the first question is, I was wondering if I'd be able to do the course as I don't have A-level biology and chemistry, but I'm going on to do a bioveterinary science degree. Um, yes, and uh, I mean, from my perspective, this all depends on exactly what is contained within your degree, because obviously if you have a you know, an undergraduate level qualification, that should supersede what you've done at A-level. Um, but I would have to withhold judgment until I've actually seen the qualification that you've got. And I think in these circumstances, what I would ask you to do is send me all the details about your academic track record, and then I can discuss it with your eye, and we can have a look and see if there's a way around this. Because there is no legal reason why you can't do this let's put it that way there is no physical block but there is also common sense you have to say which is you know if you haven't covered what would be required as prerequisites then we might need to look at this slightly differently but if it turns out you have but in a different way from just doing biology chemistry a level then of course you know there is sufficient flexibility for us yeah. to take a look at you let's put it that way Anything you'd like to add from your side, Yuri? No, it's absolutely correct. She just said that um, there is always possibility of, the, the flexibility is always applying on, on, on each and every particular case. Huh? Okay. All right, well, I'll move on to the next questions, both of which are from, from Bertie now. Um, I'll, I'll start with your second one, Bertie, because that's actually more related to the one we've just talked about. Are there um, specific grades required at a level yes and no officially i'm going to say no because that is the truth but the reality of the situation is this is a competitive degree and it's difficult to to follow i would ordinarily have concerns if anybody was applying with below two b's in biology and chemistry and your third a level well look if it's physics brilliant but i doubt it is um you know if it's maths also good but whatever it is you happen to have that grade would be slightly less important um but you know and, and the reason why i specify that is because one of the things that's different about well not unique to zagreb but different from a lot of the, med the veterinary schools in europe is there is no formal entrance exam that you have to take so it literally is a case of evaluating your qualifications looking at things like you know work experience this is also something that can be taken into consideration and will be taken into consideration when deciding whether to make you an offer or not <clears throat> but i would say if you had b's in your a levels or for any irish students on this call if you've got h2s I am going to, in biology, chemistry, I'm going to have no real concern about your ability. If you're slightly below that, it's, you know, it becomes a bit of an issue. Let's put it that way. Um, your other question, Bertie, related to funding. This is um, the number one issue that we have with British students, I have to say, which is that the, um, the, the, um, the, the situation with um, Student Finance England is that these loans do not travel. So the support that you get in the UK does not travel with you. So you are going to have to fund this probably from your own resources. Now, Yuri did pass mention this very briefly during his presentation. The tuition fees are €9,000 a year. That is below £9,250 a year. The living costs in Zagreb I mean, again, we can bring Charlotte back into this in a moment. She can talk a little bit perhaps more about her day-to-day -day real experience of life there. But I'm going to say they're going to be significantly below what you'd be paying at any major UK city. So, um, yes, funding can be an obstacle for a lot of people. And, yes, there is not very much I can actually do about that. But, um, you know, um, the reality of the situation is, um, you know... Um, you're going to have to pay for it yourself. 
So Ruby, you answered the question about how international students afford the course. That's the same thing, essentially. Um, it's difficult for me to actually do that for you. Um, but, you know, in terms of the overall investment that you're making in your future, you're definitely no worse off in, um, in, in Croatia than you are in the UK, possibly even better off from a financial perspective. But obviously, I do appreciate, um, you know, access to funding is is also an issue. Um, I will also say just, and I mean, again, this has taken me off into a slightly different area. Uh, you will have heard of this thing called Brexit, I'm sure. Um, actually, post-Brexit, not immediately, but at some point in the future, the British government is considering making tuition fee loans portable to other countries, but that is way off in the future. I certainly wouldn't put your future on hold to you know, see if that materializes or not, but it is an idea that has been discussed at the highest levels of government. Now, the next question here is one which I really am going to throw over to Euro. Is the course recognised by the RCVS, Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, in the UK? How does recognition work, Euro? Mm -hmm. Well, um, our, our university, or let's say uh, our diploma, is fully recognised throughout the, the EU. And there are no obstacles to, to start practicing for our graduate, graduates all over the EU. And as far as UK concerned and us, uh, for all the other countries, it is more about, it is about the, the, the requirements or some conditions are imposed by national veterinary chambers. But in general, there are no obstacles for the, in terms of recognition of our diploma. But however, you should uh, address this kind of, of uh, inquiries toward the national veterinary chambers. But in general, the diploma is, is recognized. And many of our students that have graduated recently from our university are practicing uh, veterinary medicine even in the UK. I know for a couple of them, uh, practicing right now and that have that have been uh, that have graduated like two years ago and three years ago and four years ago so they are practicing in the UK so no major obstacles some maybe some administrative more, more related to administration than to some important uh, differences in in terms of um, uh, what you have obtained or what you have learned during the, the, the your studies you know yeah, I think it's also important on that point to make the well to make the distinction because you're asking about RCVS recognition. The RCVS does not recognize a qualification in another EU state. What it simply does is says that if it is of the right standard and our national equivalent in that country recognizes it, that's the end of the story. Obviously, that has an awful lot to do with EU law as well, and that is changing. Now, I don't want to put words into the RCVS's mouth, but I do believe that their current position on EU or indeed any qualification around the world is to default to the EAEVE recognition. Mm -hmm. And if a degree has that, which Zagreb does, then it will be recognized in the future, no matter what happens with, with Brexit or anything like that. Yes. So um, I would say that our our school has been uh, successfully evaluated and approved by the EVE. This is the, the European Association of Establishments for Veterinary Education since 2003. So we, we possess uh, EVE certificate and also uh, the, the, the UK universities veterinary schools are also evaluated by the same uh, by the same association EVE. And it means that we would meet the same criteria in terms of uh, quality assessment, but also in terms of education criteria, you know, the, the groups uh, of students uh, in terms of uh, number of uh, uh, animal cases, patients per year, in terms of uh, surface area for each student, in terms of many different uh, academic and beyond academic criteria, which are really uh, let's say uh, the, 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 the criteria are really, let's say, uh, strict and, uh, and um, okay. really can, can compare the, 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 the criteria of education between among different schools all over the Europe. Yeah. Okay. 
And Charlotte, I'd just like to bring you back in now, um, talking about uh, money and costs and things that came up. Now, obviously, I'm not going to put you on the spot and talk about how you pay for your education. <laughs> That's totally inappropriate. But what I would like to do is use your experience to get an idea as to what, you know, you're obviously in a flat in Zagreb right now. What kind of cost would a student be looking at for that? What would your monthly budget be? Um, you know, and, and and are you being extravagant? Could you do it for less, basically? You know, what, what would you um, advise somebody to budget for? Like, really, for me, that's no, it's, there's no problem to be honest. And I will honestly say that for me to be here, my parents had to take a loan from the bank. And that's how I paid for it. And that's, that's how we can do it. Um, because, unfortunately, there was no other way. But what I would say um, is I would completely agree with you in the fact that being here is so much more cost effective than being at home in every single way, in terms of my rent for the apartment, in terms of um, my bills for the apartment, in terms of food, in terms of gym, in terms of going to a club or going to bars, for example. Um, it's so much, it's just so much cheaper here. Like there's no nice way to say it, um, but I really don't think that that compromises on the quality of your life here. Um, I really have a, a beautiful apartment here. Um, I'm going to the gym, I'm eating, I'm buying nice food, I'm going to restaurants and I'm not, um, you know, in terms of a student, it's great, especially if you're coming from England where things are a lot more expensive than you come here and it's, it's not a problem. Um, so I'm working in the summer to, to also contribute to being here. So unfortunately there, there is no other way. I also had to write to charities in England to, uh, as your I knows to to give me a, a small donation but like you know beggars can't be choosers and if you want something then what can you do but so, that, that, that actually brings me on very neatly to the next question I wanted to ask you because you mentioned they're working in the summer I mean how long is your summer how long are the terms and when are you back when you say you're working are you talking about working back here in the UK do you stay in Zagreb um, no, I work at home because it's higher wage at home <laughs> and I also awesome. cannot work here. Um, so I just do like any any job to get some some pocket money. Um, so the terms here, they are different. So basically it's got, called semesters. So you have winter semester and you have summer semester. And your summer depends on what you do with your exams. So personally, since I'm always in a rush to go back to England and get some pocket money or do placement, uh, I'm always trying to do all my exams uh in the in the summer terms so that i'm done around the middle or end of july and i can come come home and i don't have to come back to zagreb until the first of october which is when the winter semester starts whereas some of my friends they want to have their early summer while it's still hot here and blah 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 so they put their exams in the um autumn like exam bracket which is in september um mm -hmm. but i like I'm not normally doing this. So it really depends on you. The exams are very flexible. Um, you know, you just always have to be aware of the fact that there is a minimum number of um, exam like credit points that you need for the next year. So I'm always trying to make sure I have that. And then maybe if I have to leave something small and do it the next year, as long as I have this 45 out of 60 points, then it's um, not a problem. So it really depend depends on you. I w what I would also say is compared, I know that my um, colleagues at home in England have so much more time off than we do. So it also, which I had no idea about before I came here. Um, so I would also say there is no Easter holiday. There is no half term February holiday or any of this stuff. Um, all my friends at home are having a, a lot of time off, which I'm always jealous of. But at the same time, like, I don't, you know, for, for us, it's it's fine. Um, but yeah, in terms of summer, I'd say it depends on your exams. So okay. it's it's flexible system, whatever works for you. But let's put it, uh, let's look at a slightly, a slightly different perspective. Um, obviously, COVID, don't tell me what's going on right now, because I'm hopeful things are going to be different, as we all are. In a, you know, by the time anybody who's on this call actually gets to university, hopefully you'll be in a different reality. But before coronavirus hit, how realistic was it for you to get home on occasions throughout the year without you interfering with your studies? Was it something that you just felt, 
oh, after a while you didn't really need to bother with anymore? Or were you thinking it's actually a good idea for me to go back every couple of months? Or how, um, how, how often would you do it? Truthfully, I, I wouldn't say there's that many opportunities to go home. Now, if you really need to and you go home for a weekend and maybe you miss some classes, it's up to you. But personally, I was never wanting to miss classes. So I was going home at Christmas and I was going home in the summer. Right. Um, well, we, so. yeah, it's just we do hear of some universities organizing their terms as like really condensed so that students can spend as much time at home as they possibly yeah. can. It doesn't sound no. like that's not, that's not <laughs> I really would say fun, that's the thing here. But I also think, you know, if you move away from home to an international place and you're going home all the time, then why have you why have you left? And if also if you're going home all the time, then you're not able to enjoy being here. And I think it more facilitates then that you'll end up going home more. So I think, you know, you make your life where you are and okay. like, that's fine. One other question that came out of that as well. Um, how good is your Croatian now then? <laughs> <laughs> My Croatian, um, when I first, so what I would say also with the, with the Croatian, um, there is, there are some, some lessons, but it's not normally taken so seriously. So what I would say for any student who's thinking about coming, um, you know, your Croatian is the same with your studies of medicine. It will be as good as you make it and the effort you put in. So I went to all of the classes, but I found that I got more from just going out to places and speaking than I did from anything else. But I would say my Croatian is is fine to enough to get by. Not not so extensive, but it's like it's at an. Uh, I am satisfied. People are laughing, but I don't really mind. So they're always going to do that. So yeah, I don't. I it's don't their care. problem, not yours. Um, I mean, it's a tricky language to learn. So we, what you know, and it's not so widely spoken. There aren't as many resources. But you know, if you if you want to learn something, then you will find a way. And I. I think it wouldn't be a problem if you're living somewhere for such a long time, you know, and you can't at least order a coffee or say hello to someone, then you have problems. That's up to you. <laughs> no, you should make the effort. We always encourage yeah, people to so. do that, you know, but you know, it's one of those things. It's, it's part and parcel of it. And from my own experience of having lived abroad in a country where I learned the language and having lived in abroad in a country where I didn't, uh, one of those experiences is vastly preferable, I have to say. Yeah, of course, of course. But also at the same time, uh, enough people here speak English that it, it's not a necessity. But I think personally, if you don't, then like, it's a shame. So I would not say my Croatian is perfect and it's nowhere near perfect, but I'm at least tr trying and have tried, so. Good, yeah. but there's no reason why anybody else couldn't do that as well. No, I, and I, yeah, I would also say the same. Good. Well, that's given us roughly an hour now of talking about studying veterinary medicine in Croatia at the University of Zagreb. Um, if you do have any final questions, you know, now while I'm summing up, you really do have to get a move on. Otherwise, you can email me anytime you want. Um, I will also send anybody who's been on this call a uh, description of the application process. We, have, we, we touched on it a little bit. Uh, and as you already said, there are various windows throughout the year. The first one is coming up right now, but there will be other opportunities in April and July, and then potentially even later than that, if there are still places available. But we have to see um, how how the situation is. I believe that things are looking very good for this year. Um, certainly from my point of view, I've already encountered more interest than I have at this stage in the year. Um, so I think that, you know, we will be expecting to get quite a number of British and Irish students there, um, which will make for a very international mix. Um, but like I said, you know, do contact us anytime you want to just get an evaluation of what your academic situation is uh, and whether or not you stand a chance of getting in. Um, there is a little bit more flexibility than perhaps you'd find at other veterinary schools, but there's also common sense that we have to apply to any applicant, let's put it that way. So, Euro, I'd like to ask you to just conclude if there's anything you'd like to say. Well, you just said about maybe the, the, the important is the, those uh, windows for, um, for, the, for new, new entries. And uh, the first one will be open just in the, um, at the beginning of the January and then uh, in April and then July, hopefully we will, we will um, fill out our quota. 
And uh, in case of any, any uh, inquiry or any more information you would like to know about the, the studies or the city or any, any other piece of advice about accommodation in the city or something, we are always open to, 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 to help you and uh, give you some hints huh, about it. Okay. Thank Mark you. is always giving us also uh, great information for, for you can get from, from Mark side. He's also very experienced with, in, in, in terms of academic uh, criteria. And um, no matter if you send him, send him or you send an email or inquiry to me, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be anyway in contact and uh, treat your, your um, inquiry. Uh, this works quite well, I would say. Sometimes cooperation with universities is a little more uh, less transparent, shall we say, but here we all talk to each other. So you know, between us, you will get an answer to your question. And obviously on very rare occasions, we do invite students to, to join in as well. Obviously Charlotte has far more important things to be doing and sharing her experience with you than actually going out and living it. But I'm really, really glad that you were able to join us. I think hopefully participants will have benefited from your input. So thanks very much for taking part in this session. Thank you. Yeah welcome i would i would also like yeah i would very much uh encourage people to think about it carefully and to yeah there are, okay. so, there are so many benefits that i would like to see more people especially from england like making the most of it um so yeah true okay okay well thank you very much everybody who has joined us um i hope you got something from this session and I'm yeah, really glad that you came along and hope to see some of you applying to Zagreb in the near